before we discuss the seemingly obvious notion that educating women is essential to a healthy and intellectually thriving world, we should first ask ourselves why has society ever believed the notion that girls don't deserve the same educational benefits as boys? Let's dig into the studies. A study of over 40 children found that girls as young as six believe that exceptional talent was a boy's trait and their male counterparts are more likely to exhibit brilliance. It's also the age they began steering themselves away from activities aimed at being really, really smart. Choosing one's aimed at children who try really, really hard instead. They used these phrases to carry out several tests, probed the influence of gender stereotypes. In one example, the children read a story about a really, really smart protagonist that was not revealed to be male or female. They were then asked to decipher whether the protagonist was a man or a woman. At age five, most of the children picked their own gender, proving they viewed their own gender positively. However, the six and seven year olds mostly believed it was a man. Another experiment had children express their preference for two games they played. One described as for children who are really, really smart and the other for children who try really, really hard. Both genders were interested in the hard game, but the six and seven year old girls shied away from the small one. Overall, their study highlights how young children can be influenced by gender stereotypes, such as that of brilliance or giftedness being more common in men. Because these ideas are present at such an early age, they have so much time to affect the educational trajectories. Even in the 21st century, girls are still less likely to step foot in a classroom in order to learn to read and write. In fact, just 40% of countries provide girls with an equal access to education, and women make up two thirds of the world's 774 million illiterate adults. And it's no secret that there's an imbalance of women and men working in science, technology, engineering and mathematics disciplines. In fact, in the US, only 30% of people employed in STEM positions are women. Further studies have shown that gender equality in education has far-reaching social and economic benefits, as well as providing empowerment for the individual. One study found that female education reduces the likelihood of children's deaths. The research found that each additional year of a mother's education reduces the probability of infant mortality by 5-10%, to 10 depending on the country. Another found that a child born to a mother who can read is 50% more likely to survive after the age 5. As if that wasn't enough, educated women are less likely to marry early, and more likely to have smaller, healthier families. In turn, they're then more likely to send their children to school. The prevention of HIV and AIDS is also massively helped through universal access to basic education. A 32 country study found that women with post-primary education were five times more likely than non-literate women to have knowledge about HIV. As well as benefits for public health, it's estimated that the economies of some countries miss out on over $1 billion a year by failing to educate girls to the same level as boys. This all stands regardless of the remarkable achievements by individual women that have only been made possible through their access to education. Quite simply put, a world with better gender equality is a better world for all. Too many girls are told physics is too difficult, it's for the boys. Rubbish, absolute rubbish. Do it, try it. Have a go. I am Barbara Patricelli. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Pisa, uh, close by the Virgo site. My name is Aomawa Shields, and I am an associate professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Irvine in California. My name is Julia Casanueva, and I'm a physicist and a researcher at the European Gravitational Observatory, where the Virgo experiment is located. I've been serving as a forensic pathologist and medical examiner. I perform autopsies. I'm a medical historian, so I've been studying medical history for the last 20 years. I pinch myself every morning when I wake up because being a space lawyer is beyond fun. Uh, I am a physicist of the LIGO Virgo and Cadra collaboration, of which I've been the scientific coordinator in the years uh, 2012 and tw to 2014. So what do we know so far about the possibility of bringing dinosaurs back? The first one in Jurassic Park was the idea that we could maybe extract some blood uh, from a mosquito um, and then uh, take the DNA uh, from that, um, fill in the gaps in the DNA um, and then clone a dinosaur. I'm here at Penguin Beat with Jess and today we're weighing some humble penguins. Amy, how difficult is it to weigh and measure for quite large Sumatran tigers. This is Angela Ryan, the keeper of zookeepers here at London ZSL. For our samples, we're gonna hand carry them. So either me or a colleague will go over and collect them uh, from the Johnson Space Center. We'll do some X-ray diffraction, which um, looks at the crystal structure. 
So again, that will tell us about the mineralogy. So attosecond physics is the science of uh, generating attosecond uh, light pulses and then using these pulses for uh, uh, more research. A lot of stories that would sort of form footnotes in academic research just lodge themselves in my imagination. And that was really a starting point for this children's book that we created called Plague Busters. Gravitational waves are ripples in the space time that are produced when you have accelerated masses in the universe. So now we are trying to build the third generation of detectors with all the information we have. For too long, we've had a very, very tiny population dealing with space activities and understanding what we're doing. And I, that scares me. And yet it's gonna affect everybody, anything that we do in space. And so the more people we can get involved, uh, the better. And so there's a movement now um, to show our faces, to say, hey, these are the people behind your diagnoses. Um, and we're great and we'd love to have you. It would be fun to work with. This was the book we wrote that we would have loved as kids. Um, we think adults are gonna love it. Once you have data on these things, it makes arguing the case for more women much, much easier. There have been too few women in senior roles in scientific organizations and industry. Oh, I, I strongly believe in, uh, in science uh, uh, for humanity. Well, I think uh, science uh, will be the key uh, for solving uh, climate problems. So at least this is what I hope. There's no one way to be a scientist. The way to do it is to be you doing it. And if you've left a dream by the side of the way or by the wayside <laughs> and you are afraid that it's too late, it's not.